a Megan Pichana, está aqui no Brasil para fazer a gala Bernstein em homenagem ao centenário do nascimento do maestro americano Leonard Bernstein, aqui no Teatro Municipal de São Paulo, onde ela vai interpretar canções do West Side Story e, da, e de Candid, uh, ambas composições de Leonard Bernstein. Ela é cantora de ópera e atriz de musical, já fez musicais como Sweeney Todd, My Fair Lady, West Side Story, Hello Dolly, She Loves Me e muito mais. Além das óperas Falta Mágica de Mozart, La Traviata, Henry's Wife e muitas outras. Ela também fez parte da grande produção da opereta é, Candide, dirigida por Harold Prince em Nova York. E a Gala Bernstein acontece nos dias 24 e 25 de agosto e agora vocês podem encontrar todas as informações do mundo dos musicais. So, welcome to Brazil. Thank you. Um, well, you're here to sing in the Gallup uh, Bernstein here at this theater. <laughs> um, how was like getting the invitation to honor Leonard Bernstein here? And is it your first time here in Brazil? Ah, so many great questions. Um, first time in Brazil, and I already love it. <laughs> It's wonderful. Um, and also so honored. I mean, Bernstein, his music is so uh, cross-generational and it's so beautiful and touches so many souls across the universe, if you will. <laughs> not just in, not just the earth. And um, I think that to be able to celebrate him on his 100th birthday this weekend is, is quite an honor. I'm so, so excited to be here and so excited to make my debut here and work the Maestro and Fernando, etc. So it's, it's wonderful. We're so excited to have you here. Thank you, thank you. What can the Brazilian audience expect from the Gala Bernstein? Like, uh, in what songs from West Side Story and Candide are you most excited to sing again and perform for us? Ah, okay. This feels like a trick question because I'm excited to sing all of them. <laughs> Truly, I love Bernstein's music. Really speaks to my soul, and I think it also speaks to so many other souls. And so I think that the audience can look forward to having a really human experience. You know, they're going to come and they're going to be entertained, of course, but they're going to feel the passion and the humanity that I think that Bernstein innately writes in all of his music and compositions. So it's it's going to be absolutely magical. What is your expectation from the concert? I don't know. Um, I try not to have expectations. I'm excited to meet everybody. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> yeah. I think operas and musicals require great versatility. How do you prepare yourself and what are the differences between pre preparing yourself for opera and preparing yourself for a musical? Oh, these are great questions. Um, the foundation for both is the same for me. You have to look at the score. Where did it come from? You know, I mean, like, there are so many, there's a blueprint for you written out, whether it be Andrew Lloyd Webber or Bernstein, Mozart. I mean, they have very specifically laid out guidelines for you to begin your journey and to be the vessel for that particular piece. And that's where I start. I start with the music. I start with the, the lyrics also, you know. Uh, there's so many hints and so many directions of where to start from. And, and again, actually in both worlds it's very similar too. I mean, you need to get it into your body. Okay. Whether you have a mic or not, you still need to have wonderful breath support. You still need to have good technique. You still need to have incredible diction. You know, whether you're singing in English, which is my native tongue, or Italian, or Portuguese, people need to understand what you're singing uh, and communicating. Because to me, that's the whole purpose of Of performing is to share a human experience and to communicate with your audience and to and to feel them and the only way you can do that is if they understand what you're doing mm -hmm. and so that preparation is actually very very similar of course for me uh, as an American whose first language is English um, there's another layer when I'm singing in a foreign language which of course is literal translation um, I don't believe in just kind of, sort of translating. You need to know exactly each word that you're saying and that the person is saying to you. you. Yeah. you, you there's, 
there's, you need to know every single tiny little itty bitty word. There, there's a reason that it's there. Mm -hmm. um, so that's an extra step that I don't have to do, of course, when I sing either English opera or music theater. Uh, but otherwise, the preparation, it's the same on it, for, me, mm -hmm. for me. And how was uh, performing at the Royal Albert Hall honoring Andrew Lloyd Webber? It was a dream. Honestly, it was absolutely a whirlwind of an incredible experience. Um, you know, and Andrew Lloyd Webber is such an incredible man, I think that goes without saying, an incredible composer. And to be able to share in an experience honoring him. And because of him, I, I've seen so many places of the world, you know? I mean, truly, and so many people. Like, you know, he's, I'm part of a legacy, and to be able to honor him at the Royal Albert Hall, which is absolutely beautiful, and sing Love Never Dies with the Royal Philharmonic, with rose petals falling from the ceiling. It's a dream. It was absolutely a magical dream that came true. So it was lovely. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. It is. It's still amazing. <laughs> it will never not be amazing. Yeah. <laughs> significant um, musical theater character that you ever played like Ooh. and what was the most challenging one these are great questions um, I'm gonna kind of bypass the question because actually you know for me I have such an understanding of what I think the character should be and then all of a sudden you put her on, you put her skin on, whether it's Christine Daae mm -hmm. in Love Never Dies, Kunuganda, in, or whoever, and there's such an un, there's a new understanding that happens. So for me actually, at the moment, um, Christine Daae is a fascinating character, and I'm learning more about her every day. But this could also be Gilda in uh, Rigoletto, in opera, because I'm not the same person. For instance, the Kunuganda that I will do this weekend, is not the Kunagand I was when I sang with San Francisco Symphony this past January or a year ago with Hal Prince mm -hmm. and New York City Opera. Because me, Megan Paterno, right now, I'm a little different. So depending on where I am in life, and when you get to portray the character again, when you get to live in her again, when you're a little bit different, the character is completely different all over again. Mm -hmm. And you get to rediscover things because of your own experiences that you never thought of before. So each time, so I'm actually very excited to see who's Kanagonda this weekend. Mm -hmm. She's going, or Maria. My understanding of life and relationships with people has grown so much since the last time I've sung some of the music of, of West Side Story that I'm, I'm very excited to see who is Maria right now at this moment. So every time you have like new challenges mm -hmm. to overcome. Yeah. Exactly. There are new challenges to overcome um, understanding of a character. I think like the biggest thing is to try not to judge the character before you've actually lived in her shoes. Uh -huh. And so each, each time you do it, yeah, you get a clearer understanding of who this living, breathing character is. Yeah. After so many amazing work, um, is there, do you have any dream roles that you haven't, that you haven't played yet? I think most of them I've had the opportunity to actually taste, but of course uh -huh. I want to revisit them. Like in the opera world, for sure, and I have to wait a little bit, um, Violetta in La Traviata, oh my mm. goodness. Um, I'd like to give uh, Eliza in um, My Fair Lady a stab again. Um, uh, yeah, Christine Daae in the first Phantom, yeah. of course, would be beautiful. Um, no, I mean, there's so many. I think, I, yeah, I'd like to revisit some of them or do them at a more, uh, a higher level, or you know, um, uh -huh. Lucia in Lucia de Lamamor for sure, um, or Ophelie in Hamlet. Basically, my the uh, characters that have um, a lot of depth to them and more than one side. Of course, all of them have it, but some have it a little bit more than others. And I, I think those are the characters that I'm most interested in, you know, ones that have mad scenes, ones that, I mean, Queen of the Night, for instance. I mean, she's an evil character, but why did she, why did she become evil? Uh, that fascinates me, things like that, you know? Or Gilda, why is she so fragile? 
Christine Daae as, as a young, you know, there's always like a backstory to all of exactly. that. Exactly. There's yeah. always so much. And so you can rediscover that. And I think that's, I didn't really answer your question, but that's kind of where I'm Yeah, at. you did. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. Yeah. Here in Brazil, um, big productions such as Love Never Dies, they usually only stay here in Sao Paulo. Um, and like, what is it like to be on tour with such a big production? And congratulations on 300 um, shows. Thank you, thank <laughs> you. Um, it's incredible. Um, it's truly a Broadway scale show that's touring first. And um, something that I was told uh, was that, so usually, at least in America, when tours go out, they have about uh, six semi-trucks, gigantic uh -huh. trucks. Ours is 12. It is gigantic. Wow. And our crew are super men and women. I have no idea. They, in 24 hours, they'll build the set and the lights and the stereos. We come in and each one to three weeks, we will do a sound check in a new theater. Uh -huh. And you just go, 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 go. And it's, it's incredible. I mean, I was told that, uh, so we've officially been on tour for a year as of just a few weeks, or no, a few days ago. And we've been in 30 cities. Wow. And it's it's literally nothing less than absolutely incredible. There are so many gigantic, beautiful theaters all across America that I didn't know existed. Uh -huh. And now that I've been on tour, I see them. And what's also so heartwarming and exciting as a performer is they're packed. I mean, we're sold out in almost every, these beautiful theaters all across America. So like people are hungry for theater and art. And I think especially, I can't speak for Brazil, but for America during our time, what's happening right now, mm -hmm. it's really important. You know, art, theater, yeah. music, it's, it's very important that we are doing what we're doing. Yeah, so, it really is. Yeah. Hola, Mundo Dos Musicais. Uh, my name is Megan Paterno, and please come this weekend to see the Bernstein Gala here at the Municipal. It's going to be absolutely breathtaking and marvelous performance. I can't wait to meet all of you. Mundo Dos Musicais. Hang on. Mundo Dos... Dos? Dos. Dos. Oh. Hang on. <laughs> Mundo Dos Musicais. Musicais. Mundo Dos Musicais. <laughs> all right, we'll take two. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm just so nervous. Um, Don't be nervous. You at least speak Portuguese, so it's good. <laughs> You're good to go. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. Seriously, some of the best questions I've had all year. Oh my God, that's so I nice go on the news and TV every week, and literally I'm like, why has no one asked me these questions before? That's why I'm like, oh. No. <laughs> They're great questions that made me think, so thank you. They're wonderful. Thank yeah. you. Estamos aqui a convite do Mundo dos Musicais para um encontro entre Cristines. Essa daqui é a Megan Picherno, que interpreta a Christine na turnê americana de Love Never Dies, que é a continuação de O Fantasma da Ópera. Oh, hi everyone! <laughs> Meu nome é Megan Picherno, oh. and I'm very excited to be with my two other Christines oh, here in Brazil! Yeah. <laughs>